There is a new AI chatbot in town that is quickly becoming a serious alternative to ChatGPT. It's called Claude or Claude for our American friends. And in this video, I want to give it a good spin to see what the hype is all about. Now, why did Anthropic, the company behind Claude, decide to give their cutting edge AI model the name of an old French dude? I don't know. But what I do know after using it for a couple of weeks is that Claude is powerful. But exactly how good is it? Are we talking ChatGPT good? Well, my friend, that is for you to decide. What I'm going to do in this video is to show you 10 different ways I've used Claude to help with my daily tasks so that you can judge by yourself. Let's go. What is up everyone, Ronnie here, welcome back to our channel. Today I have a very exciting tutorial because we are diving into the universe of a new AI chatbot called Claude. Now, before we get started, two things I want to let you know. The first one is that as of today, Claude is available as a free beta for people in the UK and in the US. I am currently living in Spain, but I am using a VPN so that I can access this free beta. So if you're not in the UK nor in the US, you will need just like me a VPN to get Claude to work for you. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Second thing is that I am going to use that tool, that chatbot, from a content creator's perspective. Okay, so everything that I'm going to prompt Claude is related to my real job as a content creator. Also, this is not a comparison video where I'm going to be comparing Claude's performance against ChatGPT or even against Google Bard. Our friend Matt Wolf has done such a video on his channel, so there is no need for me to recreate yet another video comparing the tools. No, this video is going to be about me figuring out if Claude is really good for content creators and for helping them being more productive. So knowing all of that and without further ado, let's jump into the 10 different use cases. The first way I use Claude is simply to ask it a straightforward question in order to get a straight forward answer. So the way we are going to do this in this video is that we are going to go back to some of the conversations I've had with Claude over the past weeks. So this is the UI. So this is what Claude looks like. And this is my historic. You see Ronnie Hermosa. This is prompts that I have made today, two days ago, four days ago, nine days ago, 10 days ago, etc. So you can see that I've been pretty much using Claude for about 10 days. The very first question I ask, and this is is this chat right here. Let me come back here. Hi, Claude. Tell me a bit about yourself. What can you do? And most importantly, what can you do that ChatGPT can't? That was the first, very first question I asked Claude. Hello, I'm Claude, an AI assistant created by Anthropic. Here are a few things about me. To that question, Claude gave me six bullet points right here. I am designed to be helpful, harmless, and honest. I don't have general capabilities like ChatGPT. Instead, I'm focused on being a conversational assistant assistant who can answer questions, summarize information, and have natural dialogues. We will see over the course of the tutorial that this chatbot indeed feels very natural in the way it communicates. One of the key differences between me and ChatGPT is that I have an onboarding process where I learn my capabilities over time, rather than starting off with broad knowledge. Okay. While ChatGPT can generate very human-like text, I'm focused more on giving you clear, factual information. I let you know if I don't have enough knowledge about something rather than trying to guess. That is very important. And also, I'm designed to avoid false claims and stay within my capabilities. I don't aim to mimic human conversational patterns like ChatGPT does. I am an AI assistant, not a chatbot. Okay, so an AI assistant, not a chatbot, and he's not going to guess guess what it doesn't know. That is good to know. So I decided to follow up with a couple of more questions. Do you have access to the web? Short answer is no. So obviously I wanted to double check that information and make sure it didn't have access to the internet. So I asked, who's the hottest YouTuber right now? I'm afraid I don't have enough knowledge about current popular YouTubers to provide an option. So it confirmed to me that it doesn't have access to the web. Can you write things for me? I'm not designed to write original content or creative pieces for users. But as we will see later in the video, it does a very good job at actually generating text.
context. All right, so from this first experience, I realized that Claude was able to answer straightforward questions. So I did ask it something else, something that would be useful to me as we are preparing, Diana and I, a trip to Colombia. I asked Claude about 10 days ago the following. Could you please assist me in planning an unforgettable trip by suggesting five unique travel destinations in the Caribbean coast of Colombia to ensure that your recommendations suit me well, please consider the following preferences. Climate, landscape, activities, cuisine, and budget. I am planning to travel there in November this year. Okay, so that was my prompt. To which Claude answered, here are five unique travel destination suggestions for an unforgettable trip to the Caribbean coast of Colombia in November. Cabo de la Vela, Parque Nacional Natural del Tairona, Palomino, Mompox, and San Andres Island. Okay, so with a little bit of a description for each of these five recommendations. Let me know if you need any other details on these destinations for your Caribbean trip in November. I'm happy to provide more specific recommendation catered to your travel style and interest. To which I followed up, can you actually suggest me a full itinerary? I'll have 13 days. So there you go, it gave me a broken down itinerary for the 13 days with the days, the name of the places and some activities to do in these places that I double checked and these are real activities that could be done from these different places. So that was pretty good. That was just a good way of answering my question without any fluff in a very straightforward way. The second way I decided to test Claude is to ask it to define or to describe the tone of voice of a specific article or of a specific document. So why did I do this? Well, as content creator and as someone who creates online courses, who creates scripts for YouTube videos, I need when I'm getting some help from the AI to generate that content, to brainstorm that content, that the content actually sounds like me, not like a generic chat Bot. So if I can train the chatbot or the AI assistant, since that's what Claude prefers to be called, if I can train that AI assistant to think and talk like me, it's better. So let me show you how I prompted Claude to get there. And for that, I'm going to come back to another one of my previous conversations, this one right here, Tone of Voice Udemy course. So the way you can get an AI assistant or a chatbot like Claude or ChatGPT to describe your tone of voice is you need to feed the model as much content as possible that you have written in the desired tone of voice. So for me, the way I did this, I went back to the courses that I created earlier and I found this course right here, storytelling course, which is about five modules and 20 lessons. So if I scroll down, you can see the document is about 53 pages long. So it's a long document. It's an entire course that I have written in the past. So I do think carries my tone of voice. So I simply exported this document as a PDF. And then I came back to Claude right here and I fed it this PDF. You see right here, the way you do this, very simple. You use the little attachment icon right here, or you can use the little attachment icon right here on the homepage of Claude. And you can attach up to five different documents here of 10 megabyte each. So that's a lot of content. And not only could you upload PDFs, but you could also upload TXT, files, CSV, etc. So different types of format, okay? So the way I did this, I simply used a PDF of this entire course. Let me come back here. So if I click on the PDF, I can see its content and it's just like everything is being pasted here. It's a lot of content, okay? So there you go. Now you see how I started this prompt. The first thing that Claude did without me asking after I uploaded the PDF is to give me a brief summary of what that PDF was all about. Okay, so you see, I didn't prompt anything and Claude started to give me some information. So here is a summary of the course on storytelling for your business. Gave me pretty much the table of content with some bullet points for each of the modules. And then it gave me kind of an abstract at the end. The key themes are knowing your purpose, audience and story structure, etc., etc. So I didn't ask it anything at this point. It just started to give me the TLDR of that PDF document, which is pretty good. Then I started prompting. How would you define the tone of voice of this document? Okay, so here is Claude's answer. Based on my review, I would characterize the tone of voice of this course as friendly, conversational, 
and enthusiastic. Here are some examples that convey this tone. And I like that Claude then gave me some specific phrasing, some specific keywords I used in the copy that justifies these three keywords that it used to describe my tone of voice. Let me read one to you, for example, this one right here. Words like awesome, amazing, perfect, and great express enthusiasm about the topic. The instructor gives encouragement like go ahead, keep practicing, and have fun that motivates and engages the reader. So overall, the tone seems aimed at keeping the reader interested and excited to learn about storytelling in a friendly, relatable way. The enthusiastic conversational style likely appeals to the target audience of business owners and marketers. So this gave me a very detailed tone of voice together with some specific formulas, specific phrasing techniques to use if I was to try to reproduce this specific tone of voice. Now that is exactly what I needed. So now let me show you exactly how I used this information with my next prompt. The next prompt is all about generating new text, generating new content based on a specific tone of voice. So strong of this detailed tone of voice, which is mine, I could now feed Claude pretty much any information and ask it to rephrase that using my tone of voice. And that's exactly what I did. I wanted to check if it would be able to actually transform a random article, a random blog post into something that would carry my tone tone of voice. Continuing that same chat, I asked Claude, if I give you a blog post, could you rewrite it in that same tone of voice for me? To which it answered, yes, I can attempt to rewrite a blog post to match the friendly, conversational and enthusiastic tone of voice from the storytelling course summary. To do this, I would use an informal first and second person writing style. So it kind of gave me back the summary, the characteristics of that specific tone of voice. The idea would be to take the content of the blog post and present it in a way that feels like a friendly conversation. So what I did, I pasted right here a random blog post that I found on the internet. Okay, so this was a blog post titled All ChatGPT Prompts in One Article. It's a pretty long blog post, okay, a 10 minute read. I just pasted that here to see how it would handle that task of rewriting it. It had a very particular style, like it was well written with some kind of like sarcasm in the style that it was written. I did enjoy this initial blog post and I'm gonna spare you the reading of this entire blog post, but it is an interesting blog post. And so you got it, let me give this a shot. And then it started regenerating the entire blog post with my tone of voice. So I don't want to waste too much of your time comparing the two texts, but I just want to show you the differences between the two articles. So what you see on your right is the original article. And what you see on the left right here is Claude's interpretation of this with Ronnie's tone of voice. Okay, so title, all chat GPT prompts in one article. Okay, so the original article starts like this. Let's set the record straight and dive into the world of ChatGPT prompts, exploring their intricacies and unlocking the secrets to crafting exceptional queries. Okay, so that's the original blog post. Now here is the same thing with Ronnie's tone of voice. Hey there folks, Arslan Misra here from Level Up Coding. Today I want to chat with y'all about creating amazing prompts for ChatGPT. I know you're pumped to dive into this, so let's get into it. Now, did that sound like me? I think it did. All right, so I'm going to spare you the details. You could read this, you could pause the video and read both articles. I'm going to scroll slowly here. So if you want to do so, you can actually pause the video and read this. But you would notice that Claude right here did a great job at writing with my style. Now that is, in my opinion, a very convincing way for an AI chatbot to grab some information and adapt it to the style of a specific person. And this is also a good illustration on how you can actually train the chatbot to make it adopt a specific tone of voice. Now, folks, just one word here, because I see what is coming in the comment section. Now, just as for any AI tools, you need to use these tools ethically, okay? I know how tempting it is to just 
grab whatever content on the internet, run it through such a prompt, and all of a sudden have an entire new piece of content that carries your style, your tone of voice, that doesn't make it ethical to work this way. So the reason I'm showing you this is because I want to show you how powerful Claude is, not to show you some hacks to steal other people's content and make it your own. An ethical way to be using this prompt, for example, would be to let Claude define and describe your tone of voice and then maybe run an outline or run a half-baked article through it and ask it to complete or fill in the blanks with your specific tone of voice. That would be a much better way of doing so. But in order to demonstrate how powerful it was to you, I needed to go through this process. Now, that being said, I count on you, dear viewers, to use these AI tools ethically. Okay? I'm not promoting stealing other people's content. As a content creator, I know how lame and painful that is. Now, that being said, let's see what else can Claude do. Still in the idea of generating some new content, I asked Claude to generate a website structure for me. That was four days ago. It is this prompt right here. Let me come back all the way up. So I put it in situation. I said, you are a website designer. Give me the ideal structure structure for a website for an influencer slash YouTuber, aka me, who creates educational tutorials for YouTube, but also sells online courses on Udemy and Skillshare. We want the website to be a hub where people can come and learn about what we do, the digital products that we sell, but also discover us via a blog that would have some posts about our most popular YouTube videos. Okay, that was my prompt. Now, basically, I want Claude to generate the structure of that website because we are thinking about creating a website for Team Rondi and I just needed some inspiration, a base. So here is an ideal website structure for an influencer slash YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. Homepage, hero section with an opt-in for an email list, featured blog post, featured videos, call to action to browse the courses. Okay, that's not bad. An about page with photos and bios of the influencers, mission statement, the values, why we create content. Your blog, reverse chronological order of posts, categorized by topic, share button for social, okay? Online courses, list of available courses with descriptions, prices, etc. Testimonials from past students, FAQ question. Very good. YouTube video page, embed of the latest, the most popular YouTube video, subscribe button, linking to the channel. And then a contact page with a contact form to get in touch with questions, social media links, and an email sign up. The site should have a consistent header and footer on all pages with navigation linking to key sections. Optimize for SEO with meta description, titles, etc. Let me know if you need any clarification. So basically, a homepage, about page, blog online courses, YouTube video page would be the same as our blog page in this case because we use the videos in the blog and a contact page. That's a pretty good structure. And this is something I used, we used to build upon. So again, very satisfied with Claude's answer here. The next thing I wanted to try is a more basic thing that ChatGPT does very well. That is to summarize a video or an article that I find online. So let me show you how I did this. You see here, there is something that has been pasted into Claude. All right, so if I click on it, I see what it is. It is the transcript of a YouTube video. The video is titled, Why Mr. Beast Will Be Worth a $100 billion, okay? So let me show you how I got the transcript first. So the video is this one right here. I simply clicked on the video Mr. Beast is by Alex Homrosi. Okay, so the way I grabbed the transcript, I used a simple Chrome extension that I already talked about on the channel. It's called GLASP or YouTube Summary, I think, something like that. I will have a link in the description for you to watch this video next if you want to discover what the extension is all about. But basically, this is how it works. You unfold the description right here or the transcript. You have the entire video transcript right here. You can copy all of this with the click of a button, this button right here. So once I had that, came back into Claude right here, and I simply pasted that in the contextual window right here. So that generated this TXT file with the entire transcript. Okay, so my prompt was sum up this video, use markups to make the summary easy to read for me. 
Don't skip any important points. There you go. I have a series of bullet points that explains why Mr. Beast will be worth 100 billion. Okay, so Mr. Beast has a massive leverage. His content is his marketing, etc., etc. If you want to know why, well, I suggest you watch the video or do something similar and ask an AI chatbot to summarize it for you. Okay, where does the 100 billion number come from? So that was a follow-up question I made to Claude. The 100 billion number is not explicitly stated in the video, but it seems to be the creator's estimation of Mr. Beast's future valuation potential based on these key points. And then Claude went on giving me five reasons that explain the 100 billion valuation suggestion in the video. Okay, that was good. So I enjoyed that first experience. And what I did, I asked Claude in the same conversation to summarize a bunch of other videos. So sum up this video in the same way. And the video was selling Canva template and building a personal brand by Roger Coles. Okay, so that was actually one of my videos. That's the podcast we did with Roger. I wanted to see if these bullet points were actually actually accurate without having to watch the entire video. And because that was my video, I could judge by the accuracy of this answer. So Roger started by doing client work like websites and logos, but found his passion in creating social media templates. That's completely correct. Later, his content has led to brand partnerships, including with Canva. He wrote Canva parody songs, which led Canva to invite him to perform at their conference in Australia. Completely correct. And then a random last one here. He plans to create more courses, templates, and brand collaboration as his business continues growing. Also something that Roger said or mentioned in the podcast. I gave Claude another video to summarize. This one right here, sum up this video in the same way. This one was Alex Omrosi advice on branding in 2023. One of the points was that we need to figure out the main constraint limiting our business growth. It's usually not a lack of marketing. So I was intrigued by this point number three. So I decided to follow up on this specific point. And I asked, how can I figure out the main constraint limiting my business growth, right? Because it's something that is tackled in the video. So here are some tips for figuring out the main constraints limiting your business growth. So again, Claude gave me a bunch of bullet points that answered that specific question, to which I followed up with the following. Could you provide me the timestamps in the video that relate to each of these points? Okay, so he took the points one by one. Branding is associating intangible ideas, which was the first one right here. And it gave me the timestamp. For local businesses, focus on quality and reputation. Gave me the timestamp. And these timestamps are actually clickable. If I click on it, it brings me to the point in the video that explains that specific point, which was, in my opinion, very useful. All right, I think you get the point. Claude is as good as ChatGPT for summarizing information, be it YouTube videos, blog articles, you name it. The next task I wanted Claude to help me with was to brainstorm and generate some new ideas. So here is a prompt I used with Claude in order to get started with a brand new course idea. Okay, I have this idea that it is time that I create an introduction to ChatGPT course. You guys have been demonstrating a huge interest for this technology, for these AI chatbots, that I think it's time that I create my very own. I feel I know enough to create at least an introduction to ChatGPT. ChatGPT for complete beginners, all right? So this is my prompt. What would an online course about ChatGPT look like? Can you give me an outline for a course of about 2.5 hours? To which Claude answered, unfortunately, I do not have the capabilities to generate full outlines, blah, 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 blah. However, I can provide with a high level overview of some key topics that could be covered in a course about ChatGPT. So there you go. Intro Introduction to ChatGPT, capabilities, applications, ethical considerations. Remember, use AI ethically and the future of AI. So this is, in a nutshell, five different sections that I could include in my introduction to ChatGPT. 
something else I asked Claude to do was simply to analyze data. Okay, from a spreadsheet, I wanted to throw some data, throw some numbers, kind of like ChatGPT's code interpreter, that the new feature that ChatGPT plus users can now use. So that means ChatGPT's paid users can now use is to interpret data, like to give life to a bunch of data sets. So I wanted to see if Claude could do something similar. So what I did is to go to our YouTube channel and download some of the analytics, some of the insights or the data that YouTube provides us about our videos, download that as CSV files. And you see these three CSV files right here. If I click on them, you can see just a bunch of data columns, just some random stuff. Okay, so a bunch of gibberish if you ask me. But this is valuable data that is formatted into a CSV file, AKA a spreadsheet. So I just downloaded this information from YouTube and I uploaded three documents at the same time via this little attachment icon right here. And I simply ask, here is some data from my YouTube channel. Give me some interesting statistics, insights, and recommendations to create the best content possible based on this data. It took Claude literally 30 seconds before it gave me this list of bullet points. The video called Bulk Create Content with ChatGPT and Canva is the most popular overall with 59,683 views, which is completely wrong because this video has over 730K views on the channel. So 60K is very far from the 730K, but it's okay. So the recommendation is focusing on more content related to AI and automation could be beneficial. Now that is completely accurate. That is what we've been doing on the channel and it's been working. Views tend to be higher during the week and drop over the weekend. So posting more content during the weekdays could help maximize views. That is also true. The average view duration ranges from two to three minutes for most videos. So keeping video concise and well-paced is important for retention, okay? How to tutorials and videos about new features or updates from Canva perform well. That's the What's Hot playlist, for example. Continuing educational and timely content seems to resonate with viewers. Videos about graphic design tips and best practices also attract solid viewership, etc., etc. So a bunch of recommendations based on some real data. And now the beauty of this is that it's completely free. You don't need to have ChatGPT+, pay $20 a month to get access to the code interpreter. You get this for free with Cloud. And you can upload up to five different CSV files at the time. So once again, this is very powerful. Something else I played around with with my friend Claude here is a way to improve the titles of my YouTube videos. How good is Claude to suggest some title alternatives? This is something I did a lot with ChatGPT to kind of test different titles against each other to see which one is the best. Because as we know, titles are super important for YouTube. So I used this chat right here. Let me show you. So I simply pasted the transcript of an entire video using the same technique with the glass Chrome extension. And I started by asking if it could analyze the tone of voice in this video. So this is very similar to what I did with my online course, but I wanted to double check if my video content on YouTube carried the same tone of voice as my courses. So based on the transcript, the tone of voice is friendly, energetic, and enthusiastic. So pretty much the same keywords. So that was the base. I just wanted to double check that. But then I asked, could you suggest some good titles for this YouTube video. Now that it had read the entire transcript, it was in a good position to give me an actual title. So here are some potential titles for this YouTube video based on its content. This AI Chrome extension will change how you learn from YouTube. Okay. Instantly summarize YouTube videos with this game changing plugin. Okay. Learn faster on YouTube with AI generated video summaries. Now let me quickly switch over to our channel's homepage to show you which video I was trying to optimize the title for. This video right here. And this is already the optimized version of the title. The original title of this video was finally an AI that creates good summaries of YouTube videos. 
okay? So that was the title I kind of wanted some alternatives for because I was not completely convinced this title was that good because the video was not getting the views I was hoping for. So I thought, okay, let's try to brainstorm some new titles. So that's exactly what Claude did right here. And I actually decided to switch my title for one of these. And among all of the different titles, like I have 10 or so titles, a couple of them were very good. Namely, this one right here, never waste time again, summarize YouTube with AI. Okay, that was good. Say goodbye to endless video, use AI to summarize YouTube content. Introducing the Chrome extension that uses AI to digest YouTube videos. That's pretty good, digest YouTube videos. How to use AI to efficiently learn from long YouTube videos. So all of these titles were pretty good. I decided to go with this one, never waste time again, summarize YouTube with AI. So I did this for a couple of our videos. Okay, could you try again, but keep them under 50 characters. So it's quite important to keep your YouTube titles short. So you avoid when people watch your videos on mobile to have the dot, 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 because your title is too long. So if you keep them under 50 characters, that's a free tip right here, it's usually better. So I ask Claude, could you keep them under 50 characters? So stop wasting time, use AI to digest YouTube videos. I like that it combined digest YouTube videos with the stop wasting time. And that title is under 50 characters. So this is the one I actually used on my video. And then I reproduced the process again and again for a bunch of different videos. And it did an amazing job at optimizing my titles. I sometimes spend an hour or so together with other people in my team to brainstorm these ideas. There, it gave me almost infinite like suggestions in no time. So again, very powerful. Another way I use Claude to help me in my work, and that's something that kind of blew my mind, is when I ask it to criticize an existing piece of content and suggest some improvement. I went on Udemy and found a course, an existing course from somebody else about ChatGPT, an introduction to ChatGPT, okay? Since I have this project of creating my own course about ChatGPT, it's kind of logical to go out there and see what already exists in the market. So you can find your positioning compared to these other courses. So I went on there, I copied the entire curriculum and I pasted it here. And I said, here's an outline for a one hour introduction course about ChatGPT. I want you to analyze it and critique the outline. Answer questions like, is this a course that is suitable for beginners and why? Am I missing some important information that beginners should know about? Does this offer a good first approach to ChatGPT and generative AI to a beginner? If not, what is missing? And I pasted the entire outline that I found over there from that other instructor's course. So, Claude answered, here are my thoughts on the proposed one hour intro course outline on ChatGPT. Overall, this seems like a solid foundation for an introductory course on ChatGPT and generative AI for beginners. You cover the basics of getting started, understanding technology, prompt engineering, practical applications, ethics, and the future of AI. A few suggestions. The sections on signing up and creating a first prompt is crucial for complete beginners. I would also include a simple demo prompt here to show ChatGPT's capabilities, so to show people how to use the tool very early on in the course. When explaining the technology, NLP, LLMs, etc., keep it simple. Focus only on key concepts as beginners need to know. No need to go in depth. That's a very good advice as well. For prompt engineering, the practical example will be key. Show prompt structuring and how to iteratively improve your prompts. So that is also very good. Like you need to not only only show the prompt, but how do you follow up on the prompts? Like how do you iterate to improve your prompts? I would also add a section on use cases and ideas to spark beginners thinking on how they could use and they could apply ChatGPT, even if it's just a brief high level example. And for ethics, so there is a part about ethics, beginners will benefit from simple guiding principles on using AI responsibly. No need to go into full philosophical depth. Overall, the outcome Outline offers a solid first introduction, blah, 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 I already said that. And I say, okay, great feedback. Based on that, could you suggest an improved outline for this introductory course? So you see, I used the similar keyword that it gave me in the beginning. Okay, so introductory course. And basically what happened here, I asked 
Claude to critique this outline. Give me a bunch of relevant points. And then I ask it, okay, based on that information, based on that critique, on that feedback, give me an improved outline. And that's exactly what it did. Okay, it added some sections here. It added, for example, creating your first prompt, demo prompt, based on one of the recommendations it made. Similarly here, like a bunch of different explanation of the key concepts, understanding the technology behind ChatGPT, crafting effective prompts, prompt engineering basics, structuring your prompt effectively, iteratively improving prompts, practical examples, etc., etc. So the revised outline focuses on providing more practical knowledge and use cases relevant to beginners in section two to four and separates out the ethics and the future sections to make the core training more actionable. So that's interesting. So I obviously went deeper into this and I said this, two things about this outline. How about we swap section two, understanding the technology behind ChatGPT with section three, crafting effective prompts. The reason I am suggesting that is because students often want to get to the fun parts of playing around with ChatGPT and start crafting their own prompts. They might not have the patience to go through an entire section of theory before actually using ChatGPT. What do you think? So I made Claude this question because it made sense to me, to which it answered, you make an excellent point about swapping section two and three. Getting hands-on with prompt engineering early in the course will likely engage learners more directly. Here's an expanded outline with more details on each section, because I ask it like, could you expand on each section, explain why you choose to add these lectures and what people will learn in each section. So it gave me that expanded outline and it swapped the chapter, the section two with section three without me asking to do so, it said, okay, it's a good idea, let's implement that. It did it here. So again, like mind blown by the accuracy, the logic of this personal assistant. I mean, this was me brainstorming with an intelligence that seemed like a real person. Like if I had Diana next to me and I was kind of like discussing the ideas and the order to which I should introduce the topics in the course, this is a conversation we might have had. So again, I was blown away. Something else I asked Claude to do, which I'm not going to show you because this is quite normal, I just wanted to show you it works as well, is to reply to one of my emails for me. So I just pasted my email and I asked it to generate a reply, which it did perfectly. I also gave it a couple of instructions and a specific tone of voice. It did that as well as ChatGPT. And then, and I will wrap up the tutorial with this last task, I asked Claude to do something that the free version of ChatGPT isn't yet able to do. I'm talking about analyzing reading through a PDF. So you upload a PDF and you ask the chatbot some specific questions about this PDF. You cannot do that with the free version of ChatGPT. You can with ChatGPT Plus, so the paid version, if you use specific plugins. For example, the AI PDF extension, see, uh, plugin, the AI PDF plugin activated, then yes, this will work with ChatGPT. But you need ChatGPT 4 or ChatGPT Plus to be able to run the plugins. So I figured I would ask our good old friend Claude here if he could read through my PDF. So the way I did this, I simply found a PDF. So a 130 page PDF about AI. And I asked Claude this question. What is this PDF about? Format your answer with markups. And after maybe 45 seconds, this is what it came up with. This PDF appears to be a handbook for a class on artificial intelligence covers the following topics with markups okay introduction to ai ta -ta -ta, basics of ai ai project cycle advanced python data sciences so if i come back to the table of content right here i should find some sort of a similar structure table of content so decision making introduction to ai basics okay introduction to ai ai projects so this is not too difficult but it gave me some bullet points for everything here. That's pretty similar to my table of content. So not so impressed because it could just analyze the table of content. Give me 10 interesting insights from the document that I could leverage as a content creator who make 
YouTube videos. So here are 10 interesting insights from the PDF. AI is becoming crucial to fuel the future global digital economy, with countries striving to stay ahead in policy and initiatives. AI has applications in almost every field, from healthcare to entertainment. Self-driving cars raise ethical questions. Da, 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 da. The AI project cycle involves problem scoping, data acquisition, data exploration, modeling, and evaluation. So it gave me 10 interesting insights, which I followed with what topics should I learn about if I want to deeper understand AI and how to leverage it for my work. For each topic, explain briefly what main concept I need to study. Since this is a handbook, I want to know, like, if I want to study about AI, what do I need to study? And then it gave me the answer. So machine learning, neural networks, computer vision, natural language processing, a bunch of different topics. So this was good, but the formatting was kind of lost in the translation. So I followed up with, great, please rewrite this answer with markups. So it's easier for me to read. There you go. Machine learning, neural networks, computer vision, natural language processing, data science, robotics, expert systems, math for AI. So in summary, focus on the core branches of AI like machine learning, computer vision, etc., etc. And then I followed up with like a clarification question about a word called lemmatization. What is lemmatization and where in the document can I read about it? And it told me, okay, what lemmatization is, which is actually something complex I don't want to bore you with. But the bottom line was Claude was able to answer any question I had about this 130 page PDF. So as a student, as a researcher, as a person who is willing to learn anything really, this is a gold mine. You can ask Claude anything about any PDF. And because it has a large context window, actually the largest context window, which means you can put as much information almost as you want in your prompt, it is much bigger than ChatGPT's, even ChatGPT pluses. So you can easily upload a full book here and Claude will go through it and provide you with answers. So that is what a large context window means, like this 100,000 tokens that you can prompt with Claude. That's what they mean. You can really go heavy with the content you feed it and it will go through it, analyze it and find the answers for you. I think I'm gonna leave it here. By now, you should probably have formed your own opinion about how good Claude is. Is that something that you could potentially see replacing ChatGPT in your toolkit? Or maybe just be a second ChatGPT option available to you whenever you need it? Well, it has certainly become the case for me. All right, to finish this tutorial, I have this recap slide right here in front of me, which sums up the different reasons why I think Cloud is worth a shot. First of all, it is free. It is free now, okay? The free beta is available for all of UK and US users. If you're not in one of these countries, use a VPN, that works fine. Next, it is really fast. I don't have to wait. It is actually faster than GPT-4, which you have to pay for. Next, it is humble. It will tell you when it doesn't know the answer. It will not try to make it up like ChatGPT does way too often. Next, it has a very large context window, meaning you can input a lot of tokens, a lot of characters, a lot of words, in your prompts, much more than ChatGPT. Next, you can upload for free up to five documents, PDFs, CSVs, documents, different formats, TXT files. That is definitely something you cannot do with the free version of ChatGPT. Next, it is conversational and fun to chat with. I had a lot of fun. It talks to me in a very natural way. So I enjoyed that. Next, the history, like the way I can go back to find my previous prompts, the way it shows me this prompt was from 10 days ago, this one was from yesterday, etc., etc. I really like the way the history is being displayed with Cloud. Next, it has a refreshing user interface. I'm kind of getting tired of ChatGPT's black interface and like very basic chatbot windows. So the nice color palette of Cloud was somehow refreshing and I really enjoyed that as well. And finally, 
I loved how accurate and creative Claude was with its answers. For example, I found Claude's answer when I asked it to critique my ChatGPT course outline. I found that pretty mind-blowing. Other times that I found the answer very good is when I asked Claude to generate some alternative titles for my YouTube videos. He came up with some very good alternatives. Some alternatives that I ended up using on the channel. So there you go, guys. These were my two cents on Claude. This was a deep dive, I realized, but I really wanted to bring that new tools to your doorstep, okay? So this is me knocking on your door, saying, hey guys, there's a new guy in town, it's called Claude. Check it out, I leave it here, then I ring the bell and I go running. And now you open the door, you see Claude right there, and you have everything you need to give it a spin. So let me know in the comments what you think about Claude. Thank you for watching until the end. I will leave you guys with with the rest of our generative AI playlist so you can check out our other videos that talk about these tools. That's it for today. I will see you in the next video.